taking a walk today with the dogs and I uh, wanted to show you a, a hinge cut that I made for bedding in the front part of my land about three, four years ago. So um, I'm gonna show you with the, with the leaves off and then I'll do another video with um, how it's changed when the leaves are on because I've, I've uh, added to it. Uh, finally, the snow is gone. A week and a half ago, well, no, it was two weeks ago, we had three feet of snow on the ground. So that's finally melted and I'm able to get back here and do some hinge cutting without snowshoes on. So I've done that. Um, this is uh, our driveway and there's a small hill right here probably drops down maybe five feet in elevation over there and I don't know 10 or something over here but um, these deer are naturally using this this hill and it's not right on the peak it's just off the the side which seems to be the case usually they don't usually run the very tops they run just off the edges of what I've seen and this is no different so there's a natural deer trail right here that crosses and goes into this uh, four-year-old um, clear cut but um, I have a bedding area three on my land I have 200 acres one of them is in the front of the land so I treat the land like two different um, areas so I can hunt over there if I blow the deer screw up or something I can hunt this and I treat this like a different part of the land with its own food and, and bedding and all that and the whole land is separated by a, a quarter mile long skinny uh, man-made pond so it is kind of split uh, naturally like that but anyway, there is a bedding area and I wanna show you what it looks like now um, because it's starting to settle down and I've added to it just uh, the last week. And I'm also um, tuning up some other sections. There, I have a small kill plot, food plot, small food plot right here. And I wanna put a ch uh, stand um, just on the back side of it so I can actually enter through this little food plot because it's not gonna be like a destination plot where they're, they're gonna be in there in the, at night, you know, focusing on it and staying in there um, for long periods of time. It just kind of maybe pass by and grab a bite to eat type deal. Um, so anyway, I wanna show you what I'm doing with a, a tornado zone of hinge cutting to the area where I um, hinge cut a bunch of trees really low so the deer wouldn't wanna pass through and uh, to subtly just push them closer to my stand. Um, so it's just up here, maybe a hundred yards. We're coming up on it now. I do still have to do a little tuning up here. I wanna make a more um, distinctive trail through here and um, push them right on this side of this tornado zone, okay? And then my stand will be over here and they'll be in bow range there. This is a spot I cut just a short 20 yards between that oak tree and that oak tree. And it's uh, real wet over here, so they gradually have a natural trail that goes on the back side of this that way. But they actually have a trail that goes where we just were. All I'm doing is pushing them closer to where my hunting stand will be over here. So I've hinge cut these trees, multiple different levels, but a lot of low ones, so they're not gonna wanna walk through there. If you don't know what a hinge cut is, it's where you cut into the tree, I would say about two thirds of the way through and then gently push it over so it doesn't snap or break that one connective piece. Like a felling cut, you just drop it. That's a poor felling cut. Let's not look at that one. But um, that's a normal notch cut, back cut, tree falls, totally detached. These are hinge cuts. You want a nice like radius here. This one doesn't look really good. It's it's rotted and stuff. Um, this one will grow. Nice thick area. That's a, a red oak. Those are pretty good at hinge cutting. Hard maples not so not so good, but uh, hopefully you can get that some thickness on there, some meat on the tree still. That one should grow um, as long as you have enough light coming down. Here's a red oak, but it kind of snapped. You know, there's more of a 90 degree thing, so I doubt that one's gonna grow. Here's a good one. This is a good time to hinge cut too, because uh, it's early spring, just out of winter. The deer are hungry, and all you're doing is dropping all these nice um, trees down with all the the browse and, and buds to eat. That's pretty much a mainstay 
of food right now for them. And uh, they're coming in here and feeding. And then uh, I feathered a couple over here also just to get them neck down in this one spot. Um, but over here, again, is open to a food plot, which is just over there. So they'll be able to um, walk to the food plot. The only spot where they won't want to walk is another tornado zone right there. So they'll want to come this way around or that other way around to the food plot. My stand will be right here. What that tornado zone will do um, is cover the bottom of my stand from any any deer trying to look as I climb up into the stand, I'm going to put a, a plastic blind on top of a like a six or eight foot platform. So I dropped a bunch of crap right in front of there to thicken up and keep their view from seeing me walking from the food plot into my up into my stand. And then they'll have to go around that to get into the food plot. Also, that's going to open up more light in the woods, creating more browse as they come out and then feed on that stuff that I dropped right in front of the stand. There will be more light in here, thickening this area up and creating browse. Same with over here. This is just going to open up a big hole in the sky and uh, get more light on the ground and thicken the deer woods up, which is never a bad thing if this doesn't work because I'm no expert. I'm just trying it out, you know. I don't think anybody's an expert, honestly. There's just people who have done it more than others. Anyway, so this is the area I created right in front of where my stand will be right there. And the food plot is right behind it, just a little teeny one. And then my platform will be six, eight feet off the ground. And then the, uh, the blind up above it. And this will camouflage me from my bedding area which if we look over there, there's the start, and it's about 75 yards away from the edge of this area. Now, as we walk over here, there's a natural trail that was always passed through this area, and that's the one that crosses over um, my driveway. So all I've done was kinda um, create more of a buffer, I guess, to really push them in the same area that they were already traveling. I'm not trying to get them to go to a different area. I've also created a mock scrape right here. There's two metal wires that go across. And there's a, uh, Jim Ward does this if you ever check his videos out. And then he hangs fresh branches every year above this area, which creates a uh, mock scrape. And this is right where the trail comes through, right underneath here. And then also I have a mineral lick over here that I've kept up for uh, since I've bought the land. So here's my four-year-old hinge cut bedding area. And uh, I've extended it and making it larger this year. Because I needed to tune it up. I came in here and saw that it just needs to be fixed and, and bigger and uh, open the canopy more. One thing I've definitely learned after hinge cutting is that you don't want to be timid at it. You got to cut down um, more than you're initially going to think. You're going to want to be like, oh, I want to keep that yellow birch. That's a nice tree or whatever. You just got to kind of get aggressive with it because if you don't cut enough, all the stuff you do cut is going to die because there's not enough light coming. What I, what I did in here was I, I pretty much started dropping the bigger trees first. You don't want to create like your little bedding areas and stuff with the small trees and hinge cuts and then drop a giant tree and break them up. So I drop the big ones down and then that creates an area where then I drop the medium sized trees and smaller trees on top of that, making a pretty much like a, a wall um, where they can feel safe butting up against it. And then I create areas around that that the deer can walk and then I'll create another wall. So it'll be like figure eights, continuous figure eights though, I guess. Um, the, the circle parts in the middle of the eight would create barriers and then they can walk all the way around it. That makes sense. Um, and then in the edges, you got to make little holes that pop out. And I try to make a lot of them. Um, I want the deer to see and be able to run out quickly if need be. There's wolves in this area and stuff. So I, 
I don't make it as thick as maybe um, other areas where there aren't so many top predators. There's bears and a lot of wolves around here. Not a lot, but there's wolves and coyotes and stuff. So this area I kind of feathered on the edge to thicken up the edges in certain spots so they can't see over to my future tree stand um, from inside there. So this side is a little thicker than the other sides. There's also a natural trail that goes along this, this uh, black spruce tamarack swamp continued through where that other um, mock scrape is and goes right along the edge because the deer are always going to use edges. So that's a natural area. I hope for bucks to come by and scent check this area and then possibly do a saddle setup or something along this trail during the rut. So we'll walk in here. This is one of the openings coming to get into the uh, bedding area. So you got crap over here, an opening, and a bunch of crap over there that they can't get through and creates that kind of wall. Some of this stuff I might tune up. I might take out some of this little stuff just to open it up a little bit more. But the biggest thing is opening up the canopy. So you can see how much more light is going to penetrate than the regular woods. And that's going to create a bunch of brows in here and uh, thicken it up down inside here where hopefully they feel safe. Some of these hinge cuts, I don't hinge every single tree. Some of them I just cut off and then hopefully those will, will uh, have shoots coming out of there. And it'll just be a little salad buffet for them to walk around and eat as they come. This is the old hinge cuts. You can see what happens. This one has broken off, but you get these, you know, little suckers coming off of them. There's one hinged, and you get those trees coming off. Now, these are high ones. Some people don't um, say you, it's uh, high ones aren't necessary, and I, and I think that's BS because uh, maybe I want that tree to be high and create a bunch of greenery over here, you know, um, but I want them to pass through. So... They're able to walk through, but also I'm dropping the, the, um, you know, the head of that tree over in a different spot. And that's still going to grow as long as I have enough sunlight coming down, um, prov providing food and cover. But yet over here, you know, they can pass through easily and feel unencumbered. So I'm talking about this tree right now. How you can pass through, but then the head of it is over here creating a bunch of brush and food. So that's what I'm doing on these higher ones. They can walk right through and feel safe. Some of them get hung up. I don't got hung up here. And I'm not even going to bother trying to screw around with pulling that one down unless I cut this oak here, which I'll have to look at that and see if that's going to be something I want to do. But a lot of these I just cut out of the way to make a, a more open area for them to walk. But you can see all the fresh ones I've cut. And all of this was, you know, up here um, and not providing enough light down here. So I had to get in here and tune this up a little bit. So that's what I've done. And now we have a ton of light. Again, these are the old hinge cuts that are still growing. The end of this one looks like it is dead. So I'll cut that one out of the way take the brush and throw it in one of these piles because you got to put the brush somewhere you're not going to um, spend all the time dragging this brush out of here so these piles um, create a barrier and somewhere to put all all the uh, tops and stuff you're going to be cutting so we're swinging around here and and uh, that one trail that goes along the swamp is just over here opening right through there to get through this is kind of a barrier so what that and that's older. That's like three years old. The stuff's starting to die and fall down. So now I'll take all these little oaks that are up and drop all that stuff into that barrier area, opening up the canopy here and getting more sunlight to the, to the ground. Some of those I can tune up and make a bedding area back there. A couple higher hinge cuts and stuff where they can get up underneath if they want to for shade during the summer because I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen in the wintertime where they bed right underneath something like this. 
they'll actually choose the bed there. You'll you'll walk through the woods and you'll find the bed right there, and uh, you know, not in other places where it would be right beside something. They're actually underneath that log. Uh, I've seen that, and I actually had that in other video earlier on. But anyway, we just come around this barrier, and now I have that opening right through here, and that other opening I showed comes around, and they attach, and they go around this big um, brush pile. And then, again, I have some little oaks here, which would be really easy to hinge cut and drop on top of that. Coming over here, we'll go through this opening. I want to point out, I could walk through my entire woods and show you, but um, there's not this much deer poop in my entire woods. It's concentrated in these bedding areas. There's another pile right here. Here's another pile. As I walk through, I can point that out or whatever, but my point being is, is they do use these areas more often than the regular woods. Um, so the bigger oaks I left, I'm not gonna cut that one down because it'll, and this one over here, that's an oak. Um, Cause those will be dropping acorns in here and creating food. My other plan for this year is now that I have so much sunlight coming in, I think I'm gonna broadcast some, some clover and chicory in here and uh, create a little bit more food. But we can come over here and I'll show you the tool that I use. It's called a uh, habitat hook. Here's some fresh tracks. And this is the hook I use. Just a metal pole with some teeth. So you can either push or pull on the tree. It also extends three different levels to get you higher up and more leverage if need be to pull that tree down. Here's another barrier. And then some high hinge cuts where they can walk underneath, still traveling like I say, but on the other side, creating that barrier for the top of that tree. And this just goes around to the other side where I showed you that other crap was over there. So just a circle around that one. There's a circle around that one. This one looks a little boxed in. So you got all this tree right here and trees over here. And there's no real outlet. I mean, they could jump over there, but, you know, I would rather cut a little spot in there. So I already have a spot over here. And I think this is too far from here all the way around here. There's no real good spot. So I'm thinking cutting the spot over here out for them to get through here and get through that spot. The uh, road is also over here too, about, uh, about 100 yards away. So these deer can kind of monitor that road. If dudes are doing drives over here, they'll push the deer over here and they'll they'll hang up in this area because um, it's public on the other side. Um, the other thing I've done is I did plant some pines in here a few years ago. Um, so now I've kind of, the areas where these pines are, I've opened up this, this uh, up above them to uh, grow these a little faster and hopefully these will um, obviously get big, creating a thicker cover and um, cutting the wind a little bit in here, which hopefully will help them out using it as a bedding area. So that's what I'm doing. So like this area, this is where I got to make it bigger and longer. So I see a lot of medium sized trees up here that I got to cut down. And what I'll do is cut them down toward these areas that already have a bunch of thick brush drop them in the, the thick brush area. So these trees will go this way. These trees will go this way. This will stay open. It'll create light coming down and browse on the sides. So that's kind of my thought process in doing this. So I've come across a, a tree that I cut down three, four years ago, whenever this was, and uh, it's fallen off the, the stump. So I can cut this out, drop it on the ground, maybe push it to the side, and then this will completely open this area up. And uh, what we're doing is we're walking toward a tree stand. You probably can't see it. One of my box blinds right here. And uh, I'm going to stop short with this bedding area. About, eh, it's going to be about 70 yards away from it. 
I'll really thicken it up here so they can't see me coming into that stand. But what that stand is really going to be is a morning stand, so hopefully they won't be in here when I get to that stand. That's what I'm using that stand for is a, a morning stand. And uh, I'm, I also cut a little area for a, a small food plot that I'll show you here. But that's what I want to do. All these trees, all these medium-sized trees here, I'm going to be cutting all of these down um, up until about there. So about 15 yards away. But you want to you, you want to create areas where they can easily walk around and have at least a couple spots where they can jump out out of here. So here's a spot where they can easily get out. So there's that log I was just next to that I was going to plan on cutting out. Um, and this is where I want to put a trail. This trail will come through here. So I got to open this up a little bit more and make it more distinct. Um, the deer are going to use it more, I believe. And there's plenty of brush on both sides to make them feel safe and secure. And as we get out here toward this box blind, if you can see it on camera here, it's right there. I dropped a bunch of large maple trees and basswood right here, um, creating more light for more browse and food that's going to come up near the deer stand. And also I've planted three years ago, two hybrid oak trees on the other side of this brush and they weren't growing very fast because I planted them in the middle of the woods. Um, at the time it was a little bit more open, um, but these smaller trees and medium sized trees have really, um, grew up from when I first bought the land and stuff. So I've dropped, I don't know, there's probably seven of them right here. And uh, I'm gonna make that trail go right on the other side of this, this uh, these down trees and right into the bedding area. So this will be one area where they come out, but this will be so thick that they won't be able to, uh, you know, see that stand very well. Maybe when I get out, because it's gonna be a morning stand, I get out, walk out of here, and uh, if they're in the bedding area, hopefully I can get out of your sign limit. But as we come through here, I cut down another area for a future food plot light in here. Where hopefully I'll get some clover growing and stuff. So as we walk in here, oh, there's a woodcock. As we walk in here, I just knock down this natural area where there's a bunch of little, little brush, um, brushy trees and stuff. And I've cut all those out, threw them in that other brush pile that's there now. And uh, cut down some larger trees on the um, south side to let in sunlight in here. And this is near that box blind. There's an opening right over here where I would have a shooting opportunity into this little food plot. And then that trail that goes along the swamp is just on the other side of that box blind. That's why it's there to monitor that trail. So this will be a good spot, hopefully, during the rut and maybe early season um, in this food plot for morning stand because it's right by a uh, this bedding area. So that's kind of the idea. Um, we'll see if it works. I'll do a future video um, when everything's growing and walk through that same area and see how it looks when everything's grown up. You, um, this uh, trail that goes along the edge of the swamp and my bedding area. So now we're on the other side of that hunting blind. The trail goes right through here. The problem is we had a big snowstorm and it broke a lot of the little branches that were along that trail and pulled over the trees. I doubt they're gonna bounce back, at least not as soon as I want. So I'm probably gonna come back here and um, accentuate that trail, cut it cut it open again. Um, I did that like five years ago. I made this trail, it was kind of natural, but I, I just opened it up even more. And uh, they come through here. There's some oaks around here. There's probably five or six right in this area that I'm standing. And uh, that'll be another reason why the deer would pass through here and use this spot. But naturally, there's a trail that's always gone here. And uh, I opened it up just a little bit more, but it goes right along this, this bedding area. So as you can see, it's a little bit more scuffed up, but the deer are using it. 
know if you can see that or not on camera. There's tracks. So, a bunch of smaller trees. I have a area here where I'll just drop them right here. Because there's crap right here anyway. I'll just drop all this stuff that's around here right on there. And uh, that'll open up this whole sky. Get some more undergrowth growing in this trail for, for more browse. And as we go further, that's... Uh, the hinge cut area right in front of my other stand that I'm, I'm going to do in the future right by that food plot that I was talking about and the mock scrape is between me now and that area so that's what I'm talking about this one trail that comes through here and this bedding area so this bedding area is about a little over 100 yards wide and I'd say 60 yards uh, from deep from here to there and then the road is on the other side another hundred yards. So if anybody's stuck through on this video that's that's just what um my thought process is going through and doing this stuff and and the biggest thing i found is to don't be afraid to cut down some trees um because you want to be more aggressive than uh tentative when you do this hinge cutting stuff otherwise the stuff you do cut is all going to be for not because it's not going to grow um and you're not going to get the light you need down at the forest floor to grow more stuff for the deer to feed on. So, anyway, that's what I've found the last four or five years of doing this. All right. Thanks for sticking with me. And uh, wait for that next video. Here's the mock scrape. Wait for that next video of when I walk through this exact same one. Um more towards summertime when everything's growing.